Libya's new interim government has been sworn in, a sign of hope for a nation that suffered years of conflict, but the challenges ahead are immense. Libya descended into chaos a decade ago when a NATO-backed uprising overthrew and killed its leader, Muammar Gaddafi. The revolution worsened deep tribal rivalries, paved the way for the rise of Al-Qaeda and ISIL, and resulted in geopolitical battles between countries including Turkey, Russia, the United Arab Emirates and Egypt, all competing for influence and power in this strategically important an oil-rich country on the Mediterranean Sea. The new unity administration, led by interim Prime Minister Abdul Hamid Dubeba, is expected to replace the UN-recognized government of national accord based in Tripoli and a parallel administration in the east, controlled by the warlord Khalifa Haftar. Fighting intensified in April 2019 when Haftar's forces, which include various foreign militia groups supported by Russian mercenaries, launched a full-scale offensive on Tripoli. In June last year, the United States Africa Command said there were around 2,000 Russian mercenaries fighting alongside Haftar's men, many of them working for a company called the Wagner Group, which is owned by a close friend of Russian President Vladimir Putin. The UN Security Council has called on the estimated tens of thousands of foreign fighters, including those who have fought on behalf of the UN-backed government, to leave Libya without delay. Unless you have a subservient, neutral military, there is no guarantees that just because you have elections in December that you will achieve democracy. Having a neutral, subservient uh, military is going to be the most, uh, uh, probably the hardest challenge for this next government. Another challenge will be reaching broad acceptance among all parties about Turkey's role and ambitions in Libya. Turkey has been training military units loyal to the Tripoli-based government in order to fend off attacks by Haftar's forces. Many foreign powers say Turkey sent Syrian fighters to help defend the capital. Turkey has always denied this. Ankara signed a security cooperation and maritime border agreement with the UN-backed government in Tripoli in November 2019. The new interim administration has already defended that partnership saying it was in the interests of all Libya. The deal will potentially give Turkey access to disputed gas fields in the Mediterranean. While foreign powers continue to jostle for influence, Libya's seven million people continue to suffer under desperate economic conditions, unemployment and corruption. The new interim government has promised to better tackle the spread of COVID-19. It says 300,000 vaccines will be imported in the coming weeks and wearing masks will be mandatory. Libya has so far confirmed more than 140,000 cases, including more than 2,300 fatalities. But the real figure is believed to be much higher. The country also remains vulnerable to attacks from Al-Qaeda and ISIL that have taken advantage of the security vacuum since the fall of Gaddafi in 2011. Elections are scheduled on December the 24th, but after so many years of chaos and bloodshed and so many foreign players involved, ensuring the guns stay silent until that date will be a challenge in itself. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera.